Hello, my name's Joe and I've been making a little game that I like to call Sundermeath. It's an open world farming and adventure game where you have to build a community of people all while interacting with various RPG elements like questing, crafting and skill levelling. So I upload fairly regular devlogs and a couple of episodes ago I implemented a new pet system where when you reach level 3 relationship with the trader you can ask him to go and get you a pet. At that time I'd only added dogs but now I want to extend it by adding even more pets. Initially, I wanted to add more dog types, but after a while of thinking, I decided that actually adding cats would be the better option just for even more variety. Occasionally, I'll watch videos on Minecraft mods for inspiration for Sundermead and remembered that I'd seen a video that updated the cat models to make them look nicer and more detailed. So I went on a search for this and in hindsight, I should have found it a bit quicker considering it's just called Better Cats, but there you go. I want a fairly simple cat design, nothing too fluffy or fancy, so I think I'll go with this one here, just the ginger cat. Okay, so I just realised that I forgot to record myself modelling the cat, but whatever, here's the end result. So just like the dogs, I made three different versions. A tabby cat, which is based upon my girlfriend's cat, and I think I did quite a good job with that one, to be honest. A ginger cat and a black cat. While I was modelling the cat, I also bought some animations for it from the asset store. A little while ago I'd have tried to make them myself but I've very much accepted my limitations at this point. The pack I bought comes with a load of animations and then what I can do is take this rigged up pre-made cat into Blender, yoink the rig and set it up onto my cat and now my cat can play these exact same animations. So finally I can start adding the AI behaviour. For the most part the cat's going to behave more or less the same way as the dogs where there are three commands, stay at home, where the cat will wander around a small area around the player's bed and just kind of lays about there, follow me which has the cat follow the player around and forage which has the cat wander around in a larger area searching for items to bring home. The main difference will be in the items that they find, so the dog search for vegetables and bring them back whereas the cat will search for fruits. Obviously there's a visual difference too because cats and dogs move very differently. Like when the dog goes foraging he'll dig but when the cat does the same he'll pounce on what he finds and it's generally fairly subtle but gives off you know, the clear difference between a cat and a dog. So I'll just show you some gameplay footage of the cats now. My next task is also animal related, just as a slightly more dangerous animal. So far Sundermead has two boss fights, a corrupted dwarf at level 30 of the mines and a troll found on the island's central mountain. Two bosses aren't enough though in my opinion, so I'd had this one planned for a while. In English folklore there are various different tales of a large black dog or even a wolf that roams around the countryside. Each region has their own slightly different version, like in the north they have Old Shuck and in East Anglia they have Bugast. These tales are centuries old and so I thought it would be a very fitting enemy for Sundermead given it's based upon Anglo-Saxon mythology. This boss will show up on the final level of the mines, which is level 40. I'd also like to set up a boss for level 35 but haven't decided what to do for that just yet. Since I already had a dog model, what I really had to do was make some modifications to make it more wolf-like. This involved making it look angry and giving it some sharp teeth. So while I was doing this, I accidentally gave an early version of the wolf human teeth, which obviously looks ridiculous. So really all I had to do was set up the behavior, which will be more or less the same as the other bosses, and then the animations. And this was quite easy, so I may as well just skip straight to some gameplay of it. So for anyone new here, the mind works by finding these Roman towers throughout the world. 
You can see here there's a chest, uh, has some random loot in it. Sometimes they'll spawn, sometimes they won't, it's random. So I'm just gonna grab some stuff and you can see this little trap door here. If I click on it, it takes me down to the mines where you find this guy, Dropnir, and he can send you further into the mines where you can mine. <laughs> Let's go find the wolf. So I've actually increased the brightness for the sake of the video, it'd be a lot darker. But you can see the wolf has a few different attacks. A swipe attack and a little biting attack. As well as that, he's got this jump attack that you can see him about to do there. So what happens there is he jumps up and stomps the floor and it just sort of damages in a, a quite wide radius. You can see I haven't quite got the, uh, the equipment to take him on yet, so I've just died. The next two features for this update were really just quality of life. The first being an FPS cap that can be found in the video settings, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory to be honest. And the second took a bit more work and was an in-game patch notes panel. Here's how it looks, and in case you don't know, I'm releasing Sundermead on Steam, and each time I release a build for my testers, I send out a community post with all the game's changes. On the topic of Steam, why not go wishlist Sundermead on it, eh? Anyway, Valve has an API that I can use to get the data from these posts in their raw format. And then using Postman, I can sample this data and figure out exactly what I need to pass to display in the game. It returns a simple JSON object with a few arrays containing the post content, data, and way more. So what I can do is just get all of this and shove it into the Unity UI text object. This works well until you realize that the formatting used for Steam's post is different from what Unity's text can read. Unity uses more of an HTML style text, whereas Steam uses BB codes. Luckily, this can be easily read and converted through some fairly simple code. So after some work, I got the dates loading incorrectly and all of the text formatted nicely. Anyway, that's about it for me, I reckon. In case you're wondering why I'm sat in the dark, it's because it's 30 odd degrees outside and I am dying. Like I said before, I'm releasing Sundermead on Steam. So if you like the look of it, then it'd be fantastic if you could go and give it a wish list. I've also got a Discord server and a Twitter where I post sort of more granular updates. So if you want to keep up with the game more, go and give those a follow. The links will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one.